Hello, everyone. Nice to see everyone joining. Hi, Elaine. Hello. We're all um, we're we're um, regular tea and cake buddies now, aren't we all? <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's on offer today? Wow, it's a surprise. Is that better? Oh, oh, there you go. You can all see each other for a few. Oh, lovely to see you. Nice to see everybody. We've got 46 of us oh. at the moment coming in. It's... I'm glad to see that these sessions are obviously very useful because we're all coming back for more. <laughs> we haven't bored you yet. Yeah. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> so, um, just give everybody a couple more seconds. Have I got anybody um, new on the call? Yeah, me. Yeah, hi, June. Hi, June. So, to look over two screens. So. Ask right. June, Elaine which group she belongs to. Ask her? Yeah. Oh, what, what group do you belong to, June? A bus group. The bus group. Bus group, okay. Bus pass group, yeah. You three. Actually, maybe um, just while we're waiting, does anybody want to just shout out what, where, what group they work for while we're just letting people come in? Yeah, um, another bus pass group member here. <laughs> David. Yeah, oh, hello, David. David. Yeah, hi, June. Who else have we got? Any anybody else want to? I'm an admin CU 3A. <clears throat> I chair the Coach Trips Committee. Oh, very good. And I'm Mill Hill Historical Society. Nice to see you. Thank Julia. you. Yeah. I work for um, Sea City Museum as part of Cultural Services and the Art Gallery as well. In so we're about to hear about that. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Steve's it. eagerly waiting there. I can see him. <laughs> Hi, uh, Diana Callahan. Um, I can see my colleague Helen. We're both tour guides. <laughs> Oh, hi. But the council as well, and we live in Southampton. Okay. Very good. We're based in Southampton, that's where myself and, and Kelly, well, actually, we all, many of us are here because this is a visit Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Doesn't um, I think Elaine, I think you can probably start. Yeah. Right, there's a few more people popping in. Karen, if you'll leave you in charge. Yeah. Right, okay, so welcome to session number four of our virtual familiarization program. We're really pleased to see you all again and we have some familiar faces now around the table. So um, yeah, tea and cake for this session and by Friday we'll be having a full on dinner. And uh, whilst we talk, because we'll be such friends. But we um, really appreciate you coming along today. Um, we are really pleased to have with us um, Visit Southampton and the destination experts from this area. Um, to have a chat with you. Um, as I've said before, and apologies to those that I've repeated, we have been, we wanted to do something whilst excursions couldn't take place face to face, and we wanted to keep you inspired and connected, ready for times when you can all travel again, um, which hopefully um, will not be too much longer. Um, so as Tourism Southeast, we've been working with our destinations and attractions and offerings throughout the year, really, to help decipher all the information coming from the government in terms of what they needed to be doing, and um, also helping with lobby um, the government in terms of making sure that the needs of the industry are on the radar wherever possible, although they have obviously a challenging feat on their hands. Um, so this today and this week is about looking forward, it's about the, um, the inspiration, and, and how these businesses have, have, have adapted and, and what they have ready and waiting for you as we go. So uh, the usual housekeeping, if you could put yourselves on mute in the left-hand corner, um, that would be great. Um, we have a chat box at the bottom on the left-hand side. If you press that button, you'll see a, a, a chat come up on the right-hand side, which we will use for our Q&As. Um, Karen will facilitate that and just run through that in one second. 
And as usual, this session is being recorded. Um, you will only be pop up um, when, if and when you speak. So um, but if you don't feel comfortable that you can turn your um, your video off, but obviously you don't have to speak. It's only if you're, you're doing a Q and A or something. So I'm gonna hand over to Karen to just run through the Q and A um, procedure. And then we will go straight on into the Visit Southampton team. Hi everybody, it's lovely to see you all. Um, after being involved with uh, excursions for 30 years, um, we didn't want to uh, not do something this week. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, please use the chat box at the bottom. You can, um, if you're happy to speak, then we will ask you, otherwise we can just read the question um, and, and prompt from there. Uh, we have just one uh, pre-registered question, which we'll talk about at the end. Um, but uh, I hand over to the team at Visit Southampton. Hi, everybody. Lovely to see some actual faces, um, some new faces. Uh, so uh, Hannah's all doing the presentation for us. Um, so just quick introduction of who I am. So I'm Flo Bevis. I'm the marketing executive at Go Southampton. So Go Southampton are the business improvement district for the um, city centre. So one of the things we do at Go Southampton is run and manage the Visit Southampton website and the social media channels that go with it. And that's in partnership with um, the council as well. So the website launched in 2019. And since then, it's been sort of the main destination website for Southampton. So if you haven't visited the website, I highly recommend you going and visiting and having a look through. There's lots of different things on there, um, you know, information on accommodation, travel, you know, what's there to see and do, inspiration, restaurants, events, the whole lot. It's there. Um, so I would go and check that out straight after the presentation. Um, there's also a lot of information on the COVID guidance, so just sort of up to date on what's going on in the city, um, what measures we've put in place, when things might be reopening. Obviously, right now, nothing's open, but um, I would check back that um, later on. So um, just moving on to the next slide, I thought I'd show you just a video that we've got of Southampton just to give you an idea sort of what's on offer. So that's sort of just, um, you know, what Southampton's like. That obviously disclaimer was videoed way before COVID. Um, so I'll just run through sort of what's, what's on offer in Southampton. Many of you might already know this, but um, I'll just whiz through anyway. Um, Hannah, if you can move to the next slide, please. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. So what I think's, well, what we think is great about Southampton, I'm sure um, the people on the call agree, is like the mix of the old and the new. So we've got lots of shops, restaurants, bars, but the city also has a really rich um, history and heritage. Um, so I think that's something that's really unique about Southampton. Um, one of the main things you'll find when you come to Southampton, and as you, even as you're driving through, are the remains of the medieval walls, which once sealed off the town. So they stretch over two miles um, around the old town of the city. Um, so the old town part also features um, over 90 listed buildings and more than 30 historic monuments, including the Bargate, which is pictured in the middle there, 
which was the former entrance to Southampton. And then we've also got um, the vaults and the medieval merchant house. So you can either walk through the old town um, yourself and discover the walls as online maps and things like that. Um, but there are lots of options for guided tours. Um, so that could be with Sea Southampton, the Southampton Tourist Guides Association, um, and there are other sort of independent guides as well. Um, other places that might be of interest in terms of the history um, is the old wall house, which is the top picture there, um, which is now the Dancing Man Brewery, which is a pub and a restaurant. Um, Westgate Hall, um, Holyrood Church, um, as well as God's House Tower and Tudor House, which Rachel and Steve will uh, talk about shortly. Um, Southampton also has links to the Titanic, which I'm sure you probably all know about, uh, which set sail on its maiden voyage from the city port in 1912. And we also have links to the Mayflower ship, which set sail from Southampton in 1620 from the UK to New World. Um, the city also has a, a deep aviation history um, and groups can go to the Stone Sky Museum um, and find out more about that, including the building of the Supermarine Spitfire. Uh, you can also take a trip on Steamship Shield Hall, which Nigel will go into more detail later on. Um, we've also got some links to Jane Austen, who lived in the city for a short time, so you can find more out about that. Um, if you're looking for sort of details on Southampton's history, um, you can go to our website, we've got some details, but um, for more sort of in-depth uh, stuff, I would recommend going to see southampton.co.uk. They've got a lot of information on there. Um, so, you know, you can do your research or you can you know, learn about it while, whilst, you're, whilst you're in the city. Um, so moving on to the next slide is arts and culture. So if you or your group or whoever you're with are looking to see some art, Southampton has um, three main art galleries that are all located uh, sort of close together in what we call the cultural quarter of the city um, in Guildhall Square. Um, these are quite close to some of the coach parking areas and they're in, within walking distance. So you've got John Hansard Gallery there, which is pictures. So that opened in 2018. Um, it's one of the UK's leading contemporary art galleries and it exhibits a number of internationally recognised artworks and exhibitions. You've also got Southampton City Art Gallery, which currently holds over 5,000 artworks in its store. I think that's right. Uh, Steve will uh, probably talk about that more shortly. Um, and then you've got Solent Showcase Gallery, which is um, run by Solent University. So that supports sort of up and coming local and national artists um, and a sort of more contemporary visual art. Uh, you've also got God's House Tower, which Rachel will, again, will speak about shortly. Um, we're also working on some public art, which is um, sort of brightening up the public realm in the city centre. Um, one of the uh, projects that we've been working on during lockdown is the benches project. So 16 of our um, benches, which are along the high street, have been repainted and revitalised by local artists during lockdown. So it's something to go and um, have a look at when you're when you're shopping in the high street. Um, and then we've also got two theatres. You probably already know about Mayflower Theatre, but uh, it's the biggest on the South Coast with a capacity of 2,300 people and is the only theatre in the South that hosts shows um, from London West End. Um, past productions have included Jersey Boys, Wicked, Miss Saigon, uh, Kinky Boots, The Lion King, Grease, The Bodyguard, tons and tons. That's just a few that um, they've hosted. Um, the theatre is located in the city centre and it's um, quite close to one of the um, coach parking areas as well. Um, I know that the theatre do um, discounts for groups. Um, I think there's a discount for groups of 10 or more. So um, they've got a page on their website. I would recommend visiting that. Um, we've also got the stage door, which is a slightly smaller venue. Um, it's an intimate fringe theatre and club and they do uh, comedy nights, um, live music, cabarets, sort of things like that. So it's a little bit niche, a bit different if that's sort of what you're looking for. Um, and then we've got a, quite a big music scene um, in the city. Um, if that's something that you might be interested in, there are lots of independent um, music venues which support local musicians, up and coming artists, as well as sort of big artists and bands. So some of the 
um, examples of the venues that we have are the Joiners, the O2 Guildhall, which is in that um, sort of cultural quarter area, the Stage Door, which I've mentioned, Switch, um, the 1865 and St Mary Stadium, which is obviously the football stadium, but they do um, music um, gigs as well. They've had um, Craig David, I think Rolling Stones, take that there. So there's a lot of um, music available in the city if that's what you're after. Um, next slide, please, Hannah. Thank you. Um, so just a quick uh, whiz through of the shopping and sort of leisure facilities that are available. So you probably already know that West Quay is our main pool in the city centre, which has over 90 stores. Um, they've got lots of big clothing brands such as Marks and Spencers, Crew, Zara, H&M, Levi's, the list could go on and on, but you could take a look at their website and, and see what's on there. Um, there's jewellery shops, perfume shops, beauty shops, homeware stores. Um, West Key also has one of the flagship John Lewis stores. Um, so I would recommend going and checking out that's John Lewis department store. Um, there's also, we've also got the Marlin Shopping Centre, which is about a five minute walk along the high street from West Quay. So they're slightly smaller. They've probably got about 25, between 25 and 30 retailers, um, including the Disney store, perfume shop, but they've also got some smaller sort of boutique independent shops as well. So it's worth having a sort of a wander around there. Um, well, so we've got to West Quay Retail Park as well. So that's, um, a, a bigger retail park with lots of bigger shops in size. So like uh, places like the Cathlon, Next, Argos, Curry's, if you're looking for a new TV, maybe, I don't know. Um, and we've also got a, a, an Ikea as well, um, just in that retail space. Um, there's lots of other shops along the high street. Um, it's not just the shopping centres. So we've got Primark, River Island, TK Maxx, things like that. So lots of places to go shopping if, if that's what, what you're looking for. Um, we've also got a couple of cinemas in the city centre. Um, Showcase Cinema Deluxe opened in the new West Key South in 2017. And that's more of a sort of luxury cinema experience, should we say. They've got um, leather reclining seats and you can have a VIP option where you get a table and big screen. So that's um, something a bit different to try out. We've also got Hollywood Bowl and um, escape rooms as well, which is something is a bit niche, but we've got quite a few of, well, we've probably got two or three of those in the city centre. So lots of shopping and leisure in the centre as well. Uh, next slide, please, Anna, thank you. Um, and then eating and drinking. So Southampton has an extensive list of places to eat and drink, um, covering all cuisines um, and suiting all tastes and dietary requirements. So if there's something in particular you're looking for, there's chances are that we have it. Um, so the West Key Food Court, which is on the top level of West Key Shopping Centre, and then we've got the uh, newer development in West Key South. So they have uh, lots of you know, your big chain restaurants and also takeaways. So if you fancy grabbing a takeaway and going sitting in the park or going sitting on the benches or something like that, like you're sitting outside, there's um, lots on offer. Um, I put a few there, the Real Greek, Wagamama's, Nando's, Bills, Tycoon. The list is um, it is quite extensive, so I won't list them all, but you can um, have a look on our website. Um, there's a specific se section for eating and drinking and you can, there's a, there's a finder. So if you're looking for something specifically, um, you can look at that. We've also quite, got quite um, a lot of independent dining in the city, so particularly in Bedford Place, um, which is at the, the further end of town up towards Southampton Common. It's probably about 10, 15 minute walk from the, city, from the main city centre, but you can sort of walk through the parks and it's quite a nice walk up through the parks um, up until Bedford Place. So they have a lot of independent um, restaurants, sort of cafes, things like that. And then Oxford Street is the other end of the city up by the harbour and by Ocean Village. Um, they've got some nice uh, restaurants there as well. Um, so I would say that um, some, some of the restaurants are bigger than others. Uh, some are quite small and um, intimate and some are quite big. So if you're looking for somewhere to go as a group, um, I would probably, a few places I would recommend are La Regatta, um, Cootie's Brasserie, um, which is where the Royal, where the old Royal Pier was, um, Bills, 
um, and Ottoman Kitchen. We've also got two global buffet um, restaurants. So Cos one's called Cosmo and that's in West Quay and one's called JRC, which is in um, the Marlins. So they would be perfect for groups. Um, if anyone wants the recommendations, I can send an email if anyone's looking for that type of thing. Um, we've also got a few microbreweries in the city. So they brew their own ale and beer. Um, so London Road Brew House, Brew Dog and Dancing Man Brewery, which I mentioned earlier. Um, I would, it's, it's worth checking those out. And they do, I, I think they do like tasting sessions as well. So um, yeah. And um, there's also places for sort of cocktails, um, if, if that's well, what your group fancies, or if you're looking for a more traditional sort of pub, um, we've got um, places like Weatherspoons and sort of chain pubs, but we've also got the Duke of Wellington um, and the Cricketers Arms and the Platform Tunnel, which are sort of independent little pubs that you can see there. So yeah, wide mix on that one. Thanks, Hannah. Um, and then, so just briefly covering events, um, obviously, given the current climate, we don't have um, many confirmed events going on, but we do have um, the Discover Dolphins Trail, which is confirmed for between August and October this year. So as you can see in the picture there, that's one of um, the dolphins that have already been painted by a local artist um, called Nathan Evans. So it's around 30 giant dolphins. They will be designed by local artists, schools, um, local businesses, and sort of placed around the city center. Um, so that will be, um, yeah, that will be happening in August um, and running until um, I think the beginning of October. So that will be a nice time to um, come down and it's a good, you can go to all the places in the city center. Um, we also, have the UEFA Women's Euros. So Southampton will be a host city in 2022, which is really exciting. We were, the Euros were set to be this year, but they got postponed for obvious reasons. So um, yeah, we will be host city next summer and there'll be um, a series of games that are played at St. Mary's Stadium. So it'll be a really, ho hopefully everything will be back to normal and we can, next summer will be a really exciting time for us. Um, we also may have some Christmas activity going on this year. Um, it just depends on COVID restrictions and sort of what's happening. Um, we, in the past, we've had skating rink um, in West Key Esplanade. We've had the German market and we've had um, a Christmas lights fiction event. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll have some activity this year, but it will just depend on, on the COVID restrictions. Um, Southampton Boat Show is also... Um, usually takes place in September. We don't know whether that still is going ahead this year, but um, I would um, take a look on our website and that will be on there nearer the time, as well as Pride 2021. So that will be, should be an August bank holiday. And we don't know whether that's going to take place, but hopefully something exciting this summer. So yeah, that's it on events, um, what we've got, what we hope to have. And then the last slide, Hannah, if I'm right. So just a um, overview on coach parking in the city centre. So there's free coach parking um, at several locations across the city for drivers for up to 10 hours. So we've got picking up and setting down um, coach stops on Havelock Road and West Park Road. Um, we've got coach parking for up to 10 hours on Herbert Walker Avenue, Mayflower Car Park and Palmerston Road. And coach parking for up to four hours on Britannia Road. Um, all this information that is on this slide is on um, our group travel page on our website. So all that information is there for you. It also has a link to the um, Southampton City Council um, parking map. So if you want some more specific um, directions to whether the parking is, you can have a look there. Um, I'll just say in terms of discounts for group bookings and offers and perks for drivers, um, obviously the the people, um, Hannah and Rachel and Steve and Nigel will, will go on to talk about their own specific offers, but I would recommend um, checking out with specific venues because they probably will um, do group discounts, things like that. So um, it's worth just checking with them. And I think that's just a very quick uh, sort of summary of the city centre. So I hope that was all right for everyone. And I think next we have Hannah and Rachel. 
Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel from God's House Tower. Um, I'll be presenting um, a little bit of information for you along with my colleague, Hannah. Um, so uh, we are, some of you might know God's House Tower. It's a really, really incredible um, building. It's packed full of history. Um, it's down on Town Quay Road, um, just opposite um, the Red Funnel um, set off point and um, up near Mayflower Park. So if you've been to Southampton, you know the area, you might have driven past the building. Um, so we, um, so it's an, we're an independent uh, venue run by A Space Arts, we're an arts charity. Um, and we've turned this amazing building into an empty building, from an empty building into a new, um, new venue packed full of exhibitions and galleries um, and events. Um, so just going to give you a little um, tour around. Um, so we, we opened in 2019 and then unfortunately we had to, after a seven year project, I just like to add, and then unfortunately had to close because of COVID. Um, but we're still, we're kind of putting together a programme for later this year um, for when we can reopen. Um, and um, yeah, so as I said before, we've got, um, you, you go in, we've got a lovely cafe, a library and an event space. Um, and then we've also got um, galleries and um, a fascinating um, exhibition called Stories Behind the Stones, which I'm just going to put the link for in the chat um, because it's not it's not currently on the website. Uh, I mean, I've put it temporarily back on the website because you have to book um, for Stories Behind the Stones. So that's four floors um, of exhibitions, Stories Behind the Stones, and it tells the sort of dark history of God's House Tower. Um, and if you look on the, that first picture there, it's the, the left, the right hand side of the building. It takes you from the basement up each floor and onto the rooftop where you get these amazing views. You see the kids looking out onto, your, um, onto the Solent there with the cruise ships. Um, so, you know, if you're a ship spotter and you like to see the views across the city, it's a really, really incredible and unique um, location for seeing across the Solent. Um, so as I said, that, that, that exhibition, Stories Behind the Stones, um, it's um, four floors of really exciting and interesting um, history about the tower. Um, but if you can't manage the stairs, we've got it, we've got it all on a virtual reality headset. Um, so you can see the exhibition um, from the ground floor. Um, so if we go to the next slide, please, Hannah. Um, so yeah, so we have um, lots of gallery space. You can see from that first picture, it's a really huge building. Um, so our first exhibitions were period um, historic exhibitions um, on loan from Hampshire Cultural Trust um, and Southampton City Council, um, showing the building um, as it was back in the day and um, the area. Um, and then we also have these kind of animated displays up to tower. Um, so all the kind of the history of the gunners who used the building back in the 15th century. Um, and also um, really interesting exhibitions about when the when the tower was um, a jail um, in the 1700s. Lots of gruesome stories and real life stories, all animated and, and um, really fascinating um, for you to see. Next slide, please, Hannah. Um, if you see that middle picture at the top, we had a really amazing um, virtual reality um, reconstruction of the tower as it would have looked in 1454. So you see how the way the, the water comes right up to the tower. Um, so, you know, if you, if you visit God's House Tower, you get a really fantastic um, experience about how it was in the past. Uh, we've got these models of gunners who, who lived there. Um, we've got this animated um, exhibition on the ground floor. Um, that shows why the tower was built, why God's House Tower was built, and this really fabulous model map of Southampton, which if you're from the city, you might remember it. It was very, very dusty, and it was um, part of the exhibition when the when God's House Tower was the uh, Museum of Archaeology. Um, so we've had that fully restored. That shows the town, the entire town in 1454, um, really detailed, uh, made by a man called Ken Hellier a few years ago. Um, it's a really, really fascinating and beautiful addition. Um, so you, you, could, you could visit God's House Tower on your own, you know, uh, uh, sort of individually. I, I mean, you could wander around the, the site um, on your own, or you could also have um, a tour. We have guided tours with specialist guides um, who will take you, you know, all the way around the building, show you every aspect of it. And you could also combine that with um, a tour around Southampton Old Town. So as you see on that, that middle picture there, you see the um, original, that's one of the original entrances into Southampton Old Town. So we've kind of, you know, we've opened up the Old Town from this point um, once again. So you could, you know, start your visit to Southampton Old Town at God's House Tower, 
have a trip to Tudor House maybe and then come back for lunch <laughs> at God's House Tower in the cafe. Um, uh, it would probably take you could probably you could easily spend sort of four hours at God's House I think you know once you've seen all the exhibitions um, and had some lunch. Um, and if you wanted to order your breakfast maybe or your lunch you just need to get in touch with Hannah. Um, I'll put the email address at the end. Um, so stories behind the stones, the, the tower exhibition costs five pounds individually, or you can get a, a discount with, um, I think it's groups of 15 or more. Um, and as I said, you could do that as part of a group or just let your group wander individually and then kind of reconvene in the cafe at the end. Um, next slide, please, Hannah. Um, oh, it's over to you, Hannah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so as Rachel was saying, uh, we can offer uh, individual access to God's House Tower uh, whenever you like it. Um, we're taking bookings from the spring um, and depending on kind of COVID restrictions of the time, um, you can just pre-book your ticket on our website. Um, and the same goes for groups. Uh, so any size up to 20 people can fit into the tower at once. That doesn't mean that groups um, larger than 20 can't come. It just means that we'll split you in half. Um, so I think the, the really unique thing about God's House Tower is uh, the tower offering, which is historic. Um, and kind of tells the story of the building layer by layer um, and the other half of the building which is a contemporary gallery space uh, and collections gallery as well so that's supporting uh, local artists in the city um, who are all inspired by God's House Tower and its stories to create new artworks that kind of delve a little deeper into the history. Um, so we offer that um, the booking process for groups or individually. Um, we can also combine it with a guided tour of the building. Uh, we work with some really enthusiastic and really well-trained volunteers um, who know everything there is to know about Southampton and the building. Uh, so they can show you around and that goes up to eight pounds per person. Uh, or you can combine your ticket, as Rachel was saying, with other highlights in the city, uh, make more of a day of it, and that's £10 per person. Um, and yeah, we're taking bookings from the spring. Uh, our email address is just down there as well, and I can happily share mine if you want to get in touch directly with me and chat a bit more about what you'd like from the day. Um, we're very happy to combine some catering packages with it. Uh, over, the, over the winter, we've been rejigging our cafe offer so that it's even better than it was before. I think anyone who's been to Goss House Tower in the past will know that it's an excellent cafe offer with delicious uh, coffees and buns and sandwiches. Um, so come the spring, we'll have even better kind of catering packages to offer for your whole group. And here's just a little uh, recap. There's some lovely pictures of buns and sandwiches. <laughs> um, <laughs> and just a little recap uh, of our offer for groups. So 15% off, that's 15% off the five pounds or eight pound tickets for groups of 15 or more. Um, and just get in touch with us if there's anything else uh, more special that you'd like. Uh, into the springtime, you can see that this uh, first picture here of the lovely sunset on the roof, uh, our usual opening hours are 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. So if you wanted to come in at 5 p.m. and do the whole tour and catch those sunset moments, we'd really recommend it. Um, and going alongside kind of our normal opening times, we also have a full program of events and talks uh, and exhibitions and workshops and things like that. So um, we'd really recommend signing up to our mailing list to kind of understand a bit more about what it is that we offer um, and yeah, how you can make the most of your time with us. Uh, there's always plenty going on and plenty to learn and explore. Um, so yeah, we'd re really recommend you getting in touch and signing up to the mailing list so that you're as up to date as you can be when spring comes and we're ready to open the doors again. We have a very short film. Um, oh, this is just kind of saying that, yeah, we offer those combination tickets. Um, and I know that Nigel will be talking about this a little bit more for a special show offer. Um, and yeah, any, anything that you think uh, you might like to combine is always worth asking and we'll see what we can do our end to kind of make that happen um, so that you can spend as long as possible with us. Um, yeah, here is uh, a little trailer um, just to help you get to grips with the building a little bit more uh, so you know what to expect when you come down. There's not supposed to be any sound. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit quiet. <laughs> There must be a bus in the station.
Thanks, everyone. I think that's it from us. So yeah, like I say, uh, feel free to get in touch if you've got any questions or if you'd like to find out a bit more about what we do. Uh, yeah, we're always happy to chat. I'm just putting the address in the in the chat again. Wonderful. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Rachel and Hannah. Much appreciated. Um, welcome to all. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. My name's Steve. I'm the Venues Manager for Southampton Cultural Services. It's great to be here, um, albeit virtually. I know normally part of my team, uh, Peter, who's joined us already, he's normally down exuberating the information about the venues to everyone that visits, but um, let's embrace the way we're doing it and make the most of it. Um, it's great to be working with our partners um, here who you're hearing information from. And what I've got to offer is a trio of unique venues for the groups to enjoy. Uh, our discounts and offers are available in the information pack and obviously our contact details as well. Much like Hannah mentioned, we're, we're open and adaptable. Um, we work extremely well across the teams um, in Southampton and wider afield uh, to meet the needs of what you would like um, to offer your uh, visitors. Uh, I will try and keep my words to a minimum um, and let the imagery take your imagination. Uh, we are welcoming, adaptable and looking forward to highlighting Southampton's heritage to all that visit. We have next slide, please. Firstly, to give you a video, um, a view of our city, this video sums up a wide ranging diversity that we offer and the aspirations of Southampton to become City of Culture 2025. So please play the video. Southampton is like a treasure chest with so many stories. And the good thing about Southampton is it's a welcoming city. It's part of you. You'll always find a space for you. Yeah, this is definitely a place I want to stay in at. And plus it's like part of my heritage as well. It's like where I want to be. It's where people will feel wanted and belong. As a writer and an artist, I started doing work that I'd never done before in Southampton. The way in which the city rebuilt itself, you've got like the ancient walls right next to modern buildings. And it's sort of a symbol of the way in which it's this kind of patchwork of different types of stories from different types of communities. And I'm really grateful for that because it means that everybody has a place. And I found my place here. There is a love for the music within the city. Bands want to play where they're going to have the best show. Southampton has a massive music community. With everyone working together as a city and united as one, I feel like Southampton really can be on the map and inspire other people to do the same. Southampton's always on the cusp of understanding if a band's going to be big, it will be like a sold out show. It's just one of those things, isn't it? No, no handout, so I had to take it. Late nights, no sleep on a daily basis. Told my mum I can't stop now, I've got to make it. I'm from the same city as Craig Daisy. We all have flashbacks in our lives. I'm sitting there in command of the world's biggest ocean liner. I can just remember myself sitting on the stones on, on the beach off Western Shore there, just watching the Queen Mary or the Queen Elizabeth sailing in. I would never have imagined that I'd actually be in command of one of those ships and taking the ship myself into the Port of Southampton. What is it that we can give to people? What is it that Southampton can give to us? And what is it that we can give back to the community? It's about living, and we are living our dream. And that's happening right now. Yeah, so we want the world, world to know what's happening here in South Africa.
Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I think, yeah, we want the world to know what's happening in Southampton. Uh, we are a thriving city. We are developing. Of course, we're all in the situation at the moment. Um, but to end on a slightly lighter note, who, lighter note, who wouldn't want to promote Craig Davis' home uh, city, either on a Monday or indeed a Tuesday, as we are today? I'll leave it there and move on. Can we have the next slide, please? Brilliant. So the, now coming on to the venues that are sort of within me and my team's remit. Firstly, Sea City Museum. Uh, there's a very short video, and I'll give you a little bit of information afterwards. If you could play it, please. So this accessible venue contains three key stories, Southampton's Titanic story, Gateway to the World, which tells Southampton's history from the ancient all the way up to more recent times, and Southampton Stories, which contains our own collection, telling fascinating local stories from the people and places of Southampton across the ages. The venue takes around about two to three hours dwell time. We have coach drop off directly outside, and we've also got a cafe on site which works nicely in harmony with uh, God's House Tower after you finish their lunch and come to visit us, or vice versa. Um, and we can cater for pre-booked refreshments as well. It's fair to say that this museum is uh, targeted at multi-ages. Um, so from young children, um, there's games and activities they can be hands-on with. Again, COVID obviously comes into that and we've had to restrict some items, um, but also we've got the AV equipment to delve deeper and deeper. And we have had people be there all day long and want to come back the next day, um, which again, we can facilitate. Next slide, please. The next of my venues is Southampton City Art Gallery. Um, so if we can please play the short video. So the gallery has been open for over 80 years. Um, as Flo mentioned earlier, we actually hold over 5,300 pieces of artwork in the collection and is one of the finest collections in the UK outside of London. The collection regularly rotates across the main hall and eight smaller galleries, which also display national touring exhibitions and works from prominent artists and art institutions. For example, we recently last year, um, what's well, like the year before and tail end last year, we had um, Leonardo da Vinci, we've had um, all sorts of basic shows from the Nationals and Tate and so on and so forth. Our own collections are also loaned across the world and we also offer Art Lease, which is a chance to display a selection of our collections, artworks into homes, hotels and boardrooms. This accessible venue is free entry and dwell time can range from anything from 30 minutes to a couple of hours or more. There is also a direct coach drop off point outside where the buses are. So this might fit into someone's programming quite well if you're in Southampton and want to sort of put in some art, some culture into the venues. Again, we'd ask for pre-booking specifically at these times when our times are limited. If we could have the next slide, please. The last of my venues is Tudor House and Garden. You'd be pleased to hear that um, there is no music or, or not the same music to go again. It's notable when you play one video after the other. Um, but as you can see from this imagery, this stunning museum um, has actually been open for over 100 years. It has been reinvigorated in 2011. It's set in the old town, um, so linked to God's House Tower location, about five to 10 minutes walk from there. And we're actually less than five minutes walk from West Key Shopping Centre. So again, if you're looking to build a programme of shopping and culture at the same time, this venue would fit in perfectly. The house was built in the 14th century and it tells the historic story across the years. 
and the dwell times are around about an hour to two hours. An introductory AV show sets the scene and then out into the Tudor Knot Garden overlooking the water. Again, fantastic views of the ships that are sailing past both cruise ships um, as well as the larger freight cargo um, and also local dinghies. Then once you've finished in the garden, it continues back through the house and takes you on a tour through the times and through the stories that we tell. Again, there is coach drop off suitable, just slightly further away, literally a 30 second walk um, across from St. Michael's Square. And we also have a small cafe on site, which offers a fantastic afternoon tea if you're not already full from visiting GHD, Sea City and ourselves. As you can see, the programmes are already building into potentially more than one day um, across the city. We could be easily offering a two or three day um, offer for your clients. That's it from me initially. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to what we have to offer. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm very pleased to be the ticket manager uh, and a volunteer on Steamship Shield Hall. Uh, my name is uh, Nigel. Uh, and I'm sure that many of you have been on cruise ships and uh, like me, uh, looking forward to getting back on the water at some time in 2021. And uh, I hope when you do consider going back on the water that you might look to bring your group on a heritage steamship. Uh, Shield Hall, 66 years young this year, a really quirky little vessel run completely by volunteers. And I'd like to introduce you uh, to the Shield Hall uh, via a short video. It's called We Are Shield Hall. Thanks, Sam. What do you need to keep Britain's great steamship heritage alive and afloat? Well, first, you need a ship. How about this? The largest working steamship in Britain, SS Shieldhall. Then you need volunteers to keep her going. Painting, fixing, steering, and engineering. Whatever it takes. All proud to say, we are Shieldhall. Hello, my name is Anne McNabb and I work in the Shield Hall shop. My name is Eddie Gordon and I'm a member of the deck crew on Shield Hall. I'm Norman Tulip and I'm the superintendent engineer. My name's Claire Holmes, I'm one of the ship's captains aboard the Shield Hall. Shield Hall was built in 1955 for the city of Glasgow to take treated sewage out to sea and dump it. <laughs> but that wasn't her only role. In the summer, she would carry passengers with her on day trips dun the water to enjoy the beautiful scenery of the River Clyde. In 1977, she moved to Southampton to work for the Southern Water Authority. The time came when Shield Hall became too expensive to run. She was no longer needed. But in 1988, a group of volunteers saved her from the scrap heap for passengers and crew to enjoy to this day. She's a wonderful, wonderful piece of history. Fantastic, I enjoy it every time we come on board. It's really fun, it's a really good tour, and you can go everywhere, so it's really good. The first time, absolutely magnificent. I think it was great, it was really fun to go on, it's sensational. You get the steam plant going and it talks to you. It's all about the steam, if she was a motor ship, then I'm afraid I'd have no interest whatsoever. Shield Hall, classic British ship. Why not join us on board as a passenger or volunteer crew and help preserve this great steamship for future generations? Then you too can proudly say, we are Shield Hall.
there we go. Just a, a little insight uh, into Steamship Shield Hall. And uh, next slide, please. And uh, our volunteers are very proud of the fact that over the last three years, uh, Shield Hall has been listed as the number one thing to do in Southampton on TripAdvisor. And uh, again, it's very gratifying that a number of the comments posted all relate uh, to the friendliness of the volunteers. Uh, any questions that you have concerning steamships, they're just very eager to, uh, to give you the information and the history of the steamship. And she is uh, a former flagship of the National Historic Fleet. Uh, very significant historically, uh, places us alongside uh, ships of national importance, uh, such as the Victory, uh, the Cutty Sark. Uh, the difference there, Shield Hall, uh, we still go out to sea. And we offer a sailing program in 2021. We're hopeful of going out for 28 trips uh, between May and September. All being well, uh, our first trip scheduled for the 15th of May, the Titanic theme, and we finish our scheduled program over the weekend of the 11th and 12th of September with a Heritage Open Day and a Southampton Boat Show cruise. And all of our sailings are open to groups. Uh, uh, we look to build in a variety of sailings from two hour dock sailings to three and a half hour sailings, which go all the way down Southampton Water to the Solent and the north of the Isle of Wight. And generally those are all timed so that when we come back, we see departing cruise ships. We have four hour sailings, half day sailings, generally with bands on board, or we go out for all day sailings, perhaps to the Bournemouth Air Festival around the island yacht race, the Fastnet race, or we have special interest trips, uh, such as a sailing this year to mark 200 years of steamships operating out of Southampton, when we're going to be welcoming some steampunk groups and some shanty men. You may have seen that on the news recently on board. Uh, so the next slide, please. One of the beauties of a trip on the Shield Hall, and you saw it mentioned in the video, uh, is that it is access to all areas of the ship. And if you have been on steamships, Shield Hall is different in that respect, in that we actively encourage you to visit all of the working areas. You can go up onto the bridge and meet the captain. Uh, you can see uh, the compass, the binnacle, lots of gleaming brass work in the wheelhouse. And you can see the telegraphs in action, communication between the captain and those working down in the engine and the boiler rooms. And when you do go down into the boiler rooms, you really will feel the heat, the burn, because uh, it can get up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, about 44 degrees Celsius in the boiler room. So uh, you'll know when you visit it that you must do it. It's uh, all part of the visit on the Shield Hall. Uh, you get to hear an informed commentary on the sights and sounds of Southampton Water and the Solent. It's an incredibly historic stretch of water. We pass lots of interesting sites, uh, including Netley Abbey, Netley Castle, uh, Hive, the pier and the railway, the largest oil refinery in the United Kingdom at uh, Forley, uh, the history of Calshot, and we do circumnavigate the Bramble Bank. And uh, the Bramble Bank, of course, is where the QE2 uh, beached here south uh, in November 2008 on our last trip back to Southampton. We talk about the history of Southampton and Southampton water, incredibly dangerous stretch of water. We have been invaded by the, uh, uh, the French and the Hundred Years' War and of course earlier by the, uh, the Vikings. And uh, if you wondered how the Vikings managed to communicate with one another in their longships coming up Southampton water, well quite simply they used Norse code, dot, 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 dash, dash, dash. <laughs> but of course, let's have links, Marconi and uh, Titanic. And if you want to find out the distress signal that was sent out by radio on the Titanic in April 1912, well, you can go to Sea City Museum and they will tell you all about it. Uh, you can relax in the saloon on board the Shield Hall. We have a wide range of refreshments available on all trips. We do support local suppliers. Uh, you can treat yourself to Flat Manor Real Ale, uh, Caymanas Rum Cakes for a real taste of the sea, 
and also new forest ice cream, but there is hot and cold food available on all trips. Uh, next slide, please. Um, groups particularly welcome on board the Shield Hall. Uh, all groups of 10 or more receive a discount across a range of cruises, and we do offer a free place on board to coach drivers. It is possible to drive all the way up to Shield Hall to drop off and pick up. So right next door to where the Shield Hall is berthed. And as has been mentioned, uh, on all of Shield Hall's two hour and three and a half hour cruises, we do offer a full day package in connection with other attractions in Southampton. So you can arrange, for example, via the Shield Hall, a two, and a, a two hour or three and a half hour sailing, a visit to either Sea City Museum, God's House Tower or Solent Sky, and link those with a walk around an area of Southampton on the subject of the Titanic, the Spitfire, the Mayflower, or Southampton's towers and vaults. Uh, a one-off book through the Shield Hall, we will arrange with you your visit to one of those attractions and your guided walk. And these are proving very popular, uh, an all-day package based around a museum, a walk, and a sailing on the Shield Hall. And uh, the next slide, please. And why else would you consider bringing a group on board Shield Hall? Well, she is a very stable vessel. We get a lot of questions. Oh, my word, I've been on a cruise ship before. I did get a little bit seasick. You should not get seasick on board the, uh, the Shield Hall. Uh, as I say, she is a very stable vessel and um, we don't go too far out from shore. Uh, Shield Hall as such provides a great viewing platform. Uh, she does pass very close to the cruise ships, either moored alongside or out in Southampton water. And it is a great venue to take photos from. Yes, there's lots of covered space within our saloon, which seats up to 66. We've also got lots of space on the open decks where you can enjoy the seat there. Uh, and again, Shield Hall is run entirely by volunteers and there's nothing they like more than showing off their ship. We are working towards COVID good to go status over the next couple of months. Uh, initially, we are selling tickets at half of our usual capacity, uh, which is 100 persons. 100 tickets will be on sale. Uh, and we did have some very good news uh, just last week when Shield Hall has been shortlisted uh, for the Beautiful South uh, uh, Awards for Excellence in the Small Visitor Attraction of the Year category. Um, and I'd like to uh, hand back to Hannah. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's um, everything from us. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, I don't think anyone else has anything to add. But, yeah, thanks, guys. Oh, I should say, sorry, we have got a special show offer. Uh, so oh. do look uh, in your Tourism Southeast correspondence. Uh, but there is an opportunity for 30 uh, organisers and their partners to come and familiarise themselves on a two- or three-and-a-half-hour sailing on the Shield or and also to visit one of the museums. Thanks. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, there is just in the chat, um, if everybody hasn't seen it, a uh, high flow, Bert Hinkler was a pioneering aviator who was the first man to fly solo to Australia. He lived in Hinkler Road, Thornhill, he had his whole house taken to Queensland and reconstructed there. He's a very interesting Southampton aviator to read about. There is a mural of his famous flight in the local park. It's really interesting. I didn't know that myself. Um, we haven't got any questions at the moment. So if anybody would like to post a question, that would be great. Um, the one um, pre-registered question is, um, about international students. Do you cater for international students? Flo, did you want to pick that one up? Yeah, I just had um, just a couple of things to say that obviously we have two universities um, in the city, certain university and University of Southampton, and they welcome hundreds of uh, different nationalities uh, within their student, their student community. We also have some um, visitor maps on the Visit Southampton website on that group travel 
page, which is um, has been translated on the back in um, several different languages. I don't know exactly how many, maybe eight. Um, so you can find that and download it. We are working on a um, new version for um, the summer when everything um, opens back up again. Um, so just keep an eye out on that on the website. Um, go Southampton and visit Southampton. We work with um, the universities as well to support international students um, that stay in the city out of term time. So Christmas holidays and in the summer. So we create um, activity packs um, and then we can we can give them out to those um, sort of connecting them with experiences and venues and things to do in the city. So that's um, just what I wanted to say. I don't know if anyone else has anything to add. Thank you, Flo. You've also um, had a question, are there any Black or Asian history tours in Southampton? Um, yes. Yeah, I'll pick that one up. Um, yeah, really excitingly, uh, we're starting work in uh, training some new tour guides, some volunteer tour guides um, from next month uh, to deliver a Black history walking tour around Southampton's old town. Um, so yeah, we work with an advisory panel. Uh, we're actually recruiting extra members. I know that there's probably a few um, history enthusiasts among us here. Um, so please do visit our website if you might be interested in joining an advisory panel. Uh, but that panel was responsible for researching uh, those histories in Southampton, which are kind of historically overlooked in uh, museums and part of this heritage offer. Um, so yeah, as of October this year, um, there'll be a Black History Walking Tour of Southampton, uh, which we're really excited to share with you. So again, if you sign up to our mailing list, you can keep up to date with when those are available and come on one and learn more about, about those histories in Southampton. That's great news. What about, there's another question, do you link with the Chinese Association for New Year? Um, so on that, if, so yes, we do. Um, go to Southampton and City Council support um, Chinese New Year in Southampton. Obviously this year, everything's digital. Um, so there is a digital event, which is being live streamed on YouTube on the 14th of February at half past seven. Um, there is information on the Visit Southampton website. If you want to join in with that, there's lots of things going on. We don't ourselves, we don't host it. We're not organizing what goes on, but we're just supporting that. So yeah, good to know. hopefully that helps. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Abdul's asked if you could send them the links. We'll make sure that that gets passed on and sorted, Abdul. Um, anybody else? No? Thank you very much. Um, I learned a few things about my home city, which is quite interesting as well. So um, I'll have to go and, and, and check them out. And uh, again, well done to Nigel and the STEAM um, ship team for being um, shortlisted in our Beautiful South Awards. Uh, the finalists are announced, uh, the, the winners are announced on the 4th of March um, in a virtual celebration, of course. Um, so it'll be, uh, that's what, that's our awards which sort of celebrate tourism business excellence. So it's nice to have something positive in this, this current year. Um, so that's it in terms of the, uh, the Southampton offer today. I do just want to try, um, I tried to do something on uh, the call earlier, which didn't work. I just wanted to put up a little interactive poll if you guys can help us. This isn't about necessarily Southampton. This is about your thoughts in general as um, extreme experience group organizers on, on going forward. So I'm just gonna share this. It's anonymous, I believe. Um, so I've just got a few questions for you in general. So how do you feel about traveling post with your group post lockdown. If you could just answer on your screen with a click of the mouse or a touch of the screen. Um, There's nothing showing. Oh, in nothing showing, I'm sorry. Re like, hang on, let's try that. Does that work? No. Oh yeah. yeah. How, so how do you feel, how are you feeling about traveling post lockdown? That's quite. So 44% are confident, 24. That's meant to say wary. I think it says weary. I do apologize. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <We're weary. laughs> it was very last minute, last minute trying to fit out to type it in again. And 33% of you are nervous. That's, it's interesting to, to know how, how that. Can you see the results? Yes, as well. Okay. Um, 
Um, how do I get to the next? Forty-two percent confident. Twenty-four. Um, how, and then, how do I get to the next question? How are your, can you see that? How are your members feeling about traveling as a group? So this is your members as opposed to yourselves. Um, Nigel, yep. um, you're just share, you're sharing your screen. Oh, I, can do, I can do that. Sorry, there we go. <laughs> you want anything to pop up? Can you all see that to answer? So how are your members feeling about traveling as a group? And how are you? Are you how are you? it's not allowing you to do anything? Oh. Two questions up there. You can just see them, can you? No, yes. Yeah. Oh no, you can now. Are other people able to input? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I can input but can't submit. So I've I've got my ticks in, but it won't let me submit them. No, oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, it won't let me submit either, so I don't. Oh, okay. Learning curve for us all. <laughs> or have you dragged down to answer the other questions? I don't yeah. know whether that'd be a precursor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it says need to answer all four questions. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand. Uh, it seems to have I'm worked. Not, I've sent mine you. back. Yeah, you, so you have to answer all four and then it will submit them. Everybody seems many people are keen to get out and about. I'm done. Had enough now, haven't they? Thank you very much. Thank you. So we've got fifty-five percent people can't wait to meet up. Twenty. I will share these in a second. Everybody's filled in. How do you? Right, bye. Everybody had a few seconds to. There we go. So 52% can't wait to meet up. Most of you are using your email still and websites and Google search and exhibitions. How do you feel? Great news that you're. Looking forward to getting back to exhibitions. That's good for us. That's what we're hoping for everybody. Um, and do you think it would be good to continue to do these going forward? Fantastic news. That's good, good to know. Thank you very, very much. Karen, have you made a note of those? Okay, before I share. I have that one, yes. Haven't done that. I've got as far as that. Fantastic. That's Brilliant help. Thank you very much. It's, it's good to know that, you know, we're going in the right direction. So thank you all very much for your time again. Um, I'm going to take another picture for the social media. Could I ask you all to um, wave at your camera? <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you very, very much for your time today. Again, so I'm just going to actually, I should just do my closing statement. Um, sorry. On behalf of everybody, Great. Elaine, can I just say thank you to you, all the organisers for this? It's uh, very interesting and find it very worthwhile. Thanks ever so much, everybody. That's very, very kind. Yeah. Yes, I really appreciate that. It's, um, it's been a learning curve for us all, so uh, it's nice to know that it's, it's worthwhile. Um, that's not the screen I was meant to share. I'm still learning too. Um, really, I wanted to say thank you very much. If you want to go onto the website, afterwards um, there are 75 profiles to explore on there including those from visit southampton um, you can download brochures uh, you can make requests you can ask for postal information uh, you can uh, view videos and you can um, book onto more of these virtual familiarizations uh, we have also we'll be sending out this recording in emails so you can send that on to your um, colleagues as well for them to have a read of uh, and a listen to. 
And then on Saturday, we will be telling you some more information about our 2022 venue at Twickenham Stadium. So look out for a video that's going to be sent out then. Um, and we hope to see you in person next year and hope you can get out soon. Um, but we'll see some of you tomorrow, I'm sure, for the next round. Tomorrow we start with Shakespeare's England at 10.30. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.